There are three things you need to do in order to upgrade your smart home with Obsidian. In my previous videos, I showed you how you can use Obsidian to trigger cool automations, as well as to enhance your productivity. One of the issues that I called out was that because Obsidian is local, you're gonna need two instances of Node-RED in order to do really useful automations. And by useful, I simply mean having Home Assistant reach out to Obsidian. Let's take Jeff's example. I'm embellishing here, but stay with me. Imagine walking into your kitchen and opening up the fridge. As you do, Home Assistant reaches out to Obsidian to grab notes from the recipe folder from your great-great-grandmother's secret stash. All in anticipation for you, but it can't. There's nothing to call. There's no cloud API to query. So sad. All of the automations that require Home Assistant to make the first move won't work because Obsidian is local. Well, I'm gonna show you how to do that easily within three steps. First, we need Node-RED. Think of it as a middleman connecting Obsidian and Home Assistant together. Download and install Node-RED on the same computer where your Obsidian vault lives. It's free and easy. Just search Node-RED download on Google and just follow the steps. My suggestion is to use NPM. You're gonna have these other options like Docker or Snap, use NPM. And remember, this needs to be installed on the same computer that Obsidian is on. Okay, so that's step one. Step two, you're gonna need to download some specific plugins and automations for Node-RED itself. We're gonna need two. The first one is called Files and Folders. In order to install the Files and Folder plugin, uh, click on the hamburger menu, click on Manage Palette, click on Install, and then you can just type in files and and it should show up here. Uh, you're gonna see install, mine is already installed, but you click that button and it'll be installed. And once it is, it'll show up here on this side here. So you'll see these nodes show up here in this turquoise color. This lets you talk to your computer's files, including your Obsidian Vault. Next, you're going to need the automations. I'm going to walk through this so you can get an understanding as to how all of this works. These three flows are going to be responsible for bridging the gap or standing as the middleman between Home Assistant and Obsidian. This first flow or this first group here is responsible for watching for changes within any of the files Obsidian is watching or handling and sending that information back to whoever is looking for it. In our case, we're specifying Home Assistant webhook. So in Home Assistant, we're gonna see this later on in the tutorial, uh, we're going to have a webhook that is going to receive these events. These two flows here, this get lists, is responsible for basically listing out all of the folders that uh, this particular Node-RED server is watching. So everything that we can tell it here. So let's take a quick look. This Obsidian Vault path, we get to specify where that vault is, and this is going to get all of the markdown files within there. As you can see, we have this file mask here. It's going to grab all of the markdown files within there. Uh, there are some markdowns within hidden folders that we don't care for. So we have this node here that's just going to exclude any of those uh, files that are within hidden folders. This last flow here is for grabbing information within a particular file. So Home Assistant will call this endpoint. It's gonna pass it uh, the name and path of a file that it wants to read. This is going to read that file and send the information back to Home Assistant. So all together, we're gonna be able to see changes. We're gonna be able to see all of the files in terms of the names and the path of where they exist, as well as to grab information from within it. Oh, and here's something important. You're gonna to need to add an environment variable that points Node-RED to where your Obsidian Vault lives. You can do this by going into Node-RED settings and then click on settings, click the environment section, and then you can just add in a new variable there. Additionally, once you create your webhook within Home Assistant, uh, you can come back here to add that into this section as well, just like what you see here. I know I didn't go into depth about what each of these particular nodes do and what's in them. I have something for you at the end of this video that will make this easier. So stay tuned and keep watching. With all of that done, click deploy and we're just about done. We're gonna now move over to Home Assistant where we're gonna do most of the heavy lifting. So here we're gonna tell Home Assistant about our new Node-RED setup. Now you're gonna need access to the configuration file. I'm able to just mount that file system from Home Assistant into my 
my uh, local system here, um, but you may use Visual Studio Code, but however you can get to your configuration file, you're gonna need to get to it. Open up Home Assistant's configuration file, the configuration.yaml, and we're gonna add in two things. The first thing we're gonna add is this get obsidian file command. Feel free to pause the video to copy this into your configuration file, or you can wait until the end of the video where I can show you where you can find this to copy and paste it from. Remember, you're gonna have to replace your node red computer IP address section with your actual computer's IP address. We now need to add this rest sensor to Home Assistant. Again, remember to replace the IP address. The scan interval section tells Home Assistant how often to check for new notes. Right now, this is set for every hour, but you can change this. One more thing, we need to set up the webhook in Home Assistant to get notified when a note changes. So after you restart Home Assistant, you're pretty much there. Let's recap what we've just done. In Home Assistant, you're gonna see a sensor called Obsidian Documents. Now this updates every hour or whatever you set it to with a list of all of your notes from Obsidian. You also have access to a new command called get obsidian file. This gives you the ability to get the content of any specific note using the full path. You can test this command by creating a helper button and setting it as a trigger to call the get obsidian file command with the full path to a known document within obsidian. I have my particular automation to print to the notifications, but as you can see, this works pretty well. Lastly, we have the Obsidian event webhook. Now this is perfect because you have the ability now to create automations based off of changes to your notes. These are test automations to show you that this stuff works. Feel free to pause and copy this or expand on it and make it your own. So do you remember when I mentioned that Node-RED acts as a middleman between Obsidian and Home Assistant? Instead of having to prepare these nodes yourself, you can actually import that middleman automation if you're low on time and experience. The file can be found in the back room of the Technothusiast community, where you can also get access to additional content and be notified when I post new automations and videos. If you find the videos that I make here helpful and would like to go the extra mile and support this channel, consider becoming a member of the Technothusiast community. You not only get access to the back room that I mentioned earlier, but you also get access to the curated automation library and the lab where I post my automations that are rather unique and you're not gonna find them anywhere else like I don't condone violence but these automations slap. I didn't mention this earlier, but you can technically go even further with this automation. Using Node-RED, you can actually write new Obsidian files. This means that your smart home can generate actual documents that can be accessed within Obsidian. If you're comfortable with Node-RED, feel free to build this out for yourself. I gave you the idea, the building blocks, you don't need me, I believe in you. With that being said, you might wanna watch this video here, especially if you haven't seen it already. It actually gives you five automations that you can create using Obsidian.